Welcome to The Optimized Geek, a podcast full of secret knowledge that will enable you to reboot your life. Ready to improve your health, wealth, partner intimacy, peer group, spirit, career, business, and more? Then buckle up. Here's your host, Stefan Spencer, author, speaker, SEO expert, and a quintessential geek who has been through his own incredible transformation. You wouldn't even recognize him five years ago. In this episode, number 161, you're going to learn how to identify your genius and leverage it. You'll also learn how to find or even create a peer group of high performers, as well as take your relationships to a whole new level. Our guest today is Mike Zeller. He's a social entrepreneur who started eight different businesses in five different industries, producing over $100 million in sales. He's been featured in the Huffington Post, Business Insider, and Entrepreneur. And in addition to having his own marketing agency, he mentors and educates other budding entrepreneurs. Mike, it's so great to have you on the show. Stefan, honored to be on the show and always great to connect with you. I, I love connecting with, with other brilliant business minds and you are one of those guys. So I'm excited to dive in. Awesome. Me too. Let's start by talking about your mastermind and why you have a mastermind group and what you hope to get out of a mastermind or what you think the top benefits are? You know, so you and I were both part of uh, Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership Group. And just from that experience, we both like came to experience like the power of proximity and the power of being around other people that are just doing great things, that are dreaming bigger, that are, are pursuing things in a resourceful, creative, loving, supportive state to be able to recreate that is one of the most fulfilling things that I do, arguably the most fulfilling things, thing that I do is, is my Rising Stars Mastermind. And, and I just like I was just talking with a guy, another entrepreneur earlier this morning, and we talked about the power of proximity and the power of exponential relationships. It's like if you get to reach into the future, grab a hold of the future and pull it to you. That's the power of like accelerated learning with masterminds, with coaching, with continually just investing more deeply in yourself and surrounding yourself with other great people that help you level up. So that's how I like to think about it and why I do it ultimately. So, so an exponential relationship or an exponential connection is going to move your career, your business your life path or whatever you're focused on ahead by leaps and bounds. It's going to significantly cut the time, the effort, and just the hard slog required. Just like one introduction, one connection, one lunch or, or coffee with somebody could cut five years off your career path, right? A hard slog trying to make it and you just have one relationship that cuts all that time out of it. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's, it's been so fun seeing so many people in my mastermind and other groups that I'm in, just in my experience with Tony Robbins. I'm sure you see it with your groups and the, and the programs that you've created. It's like a shift, one relationship. And you look at a great example in history is Henry Ford was a tinker and a failed entrepreneur till he became friends with Thomas Edison. And he was basically in this unofficial mastermind group of all these great industrialists. And that's, and you look at the people in the group, Edison, who founded GE, Ford, I think Andrew Carnegie and Rockefeller and all these guys interacted with each other during that, that day and age. And Ford and Edison especially spent a lot of time together and it just, Henry Ford's career and his business took off when he started spending regular time with Thomas Edison and these other guys. Yeah. Before, he was kind of just struggling and limping along, failure after failure. Yeah, that's, a, that's so great of a story to br or uh, an example to bring up, and that reminds me of the TV series called The Men Who Built America. Have you seen that? Oh, cool. No, that sounds great. I haven't seen it. Oh, uh, you got to add that to your list <laughs> because... It has stories not just of Thomas Edison and Henry Ford, but also J.P. Morgan, Andrew Carnegie, John D. Rockefeller, 
Cornelius Vanderbilt. Amazing, amazing stories of how these different lives intertwined and how how they made such a difference to our country, to our economy, and to history. Like they just were so influential, and uh, they had really interesting beginnings. I mean, like for example, John D. Rockefeller almost died. He could have perished on this train wreck that happened, except he missed the train by one minute, and he never misses a train. He was going to have a meeting with, I think it was with Vanderbilt. He missed the train. He missed his appointment with death and his appointment with Vanderbilt, and Vanderbilt then didn't hire him. Or I forget the exact story, but it just comes to remind me that there are no coincidences. Everything is meant to be part of our history and our path. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, what's the expression that Tony uses? That uh, life happens for us, not to us. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And even, and you and I, even like a good example of this is like, I got to connect with a, one of the smartest guys in the country on SEO because of a mastermind, which that being you, of course, right? <laughs> like, I and I, you gave me that giant encyclopedia book that I've read a section of. <laughs> but, but what you never it finished was, it? <laughs> uh, I'll get to it one day. Uh, it's on my reading list, but I've read a good chunk of it, and it's like that wouldn't have happened if I wasn't in proximity, and if I didn't put myself in proximity. And now I get to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Right. Like we get to learn. Man, life is so much about relationship, and we shortchange ourselves by passively accepting the people we we have in our current friend group or peer group instead of intentionally creating what we want. Yes, and what's the expression that you are the average of the five people you hang out with the most? So if you want to be a, a different, more evolved person, then change your peer group. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So... Yeah, and I think it's true for all facets of life. Your relationship quality, your health quality, your finances, your emotional and mental state is dependent on the people you spend the most time with. So who has been a big influence in your life, besides Tony Robbins, of course, who yeah. uh, uh, was kind of the the intersection for both of us to meet through his Platinum Partnership, but who else has been a huge difference maker in your life yeah i would say in terms of on the close really close level one of my best friends uh he was my best man at my wedding matt grimes he's uh soon to be a professor of entrepreneurship at cambridge starts this fall there one of the smartest guys but also one of the most heartfelt soulful generous kind people i've ever met and you know i get to spend several weeks a year with him and his wife my wife you know, we just travel together frequently. And he just, he challenges me. Like we did a destination wedding because he said, Mike, if you do a a wedding in your hometown, people from your past come. If you do a destination wedding, people from your future come. Oh, I like that. And we did a destination wedding, my my wife and I. It was really magical. It was in the rainforests of Costa Rica on the Osa Peninsula. It was to die for. It was incredible. Of course, we got married on the beach <laughs> at the yeah. rainforest, and it was uh, incredible having monkeys there and uh, <laughs> these exotic birds and everything. It was it was beautiful. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you just—he's helped me believe in myself. I think that's one of the other powers of those the great relationships is if you're a great friend and you're in an empowering, resourceful state you believe in each other and you help each other become more of who you're called to be. Yeah. I work on cultivating exponential relationships myself. And some of my best friends have come from the Platinum Partnership family, but just being in a place of constant learning, growth, contribution by going to different masterminds, going to different seminars and things that are focused on improving myself, the personal development stuff means that I have lots of opportunities to meet high quality people 
and some of those have become lifelong friends and it's yeah pretty cool yeah Love it. besides exponential relationships there's another term that I've been hearing a lot about, and that's exponential technologies. I, mm. I know that uh, Peter Diamandis is a friend of Tony's, and uh, he's got Abundance 360, his own mastermind group. Mm. He's also co-founded Singularity University with Ray Kurzweil, and that's a really interesting organization as well. So exponential technologies, those are the technologies that are going to make a huge difference to humanity to to society to the planet in a very short time period because they can it's the law of accelerating returns things speed up in terms of technology evolution over time because of moore's law because of metcalf's law moore's law being the uh, fact that every i think 18 months the processing speed either doubles or the price for the same processing speed uh, halves, and then Metcalf's law is about this: the power of the network or value of the network grows mm-hmm. exponentially with the size of the network. So, if you have a thousand fax machines or a thousand email addresses in the world, you know it's only moderately valuable. But when you have, let's say, ten thousand or a million, then it becomes exponentially more valuable, and then it becomes world changing. So mm-hmm. what are some exponential technologies that you're excited about? Yeah, so many of them, but obviously the power of robotics and the power of all these bots and automated machine learning that's really, it's going to overtake so many elements of our marketing, just where the human design and an algorithm to think for you and it's happening right now in, in so many pieces of digital marketing. It's, it's in the early stages, but it's it's really taken off, and that's going to shift things. I really do love the future in terms of transportation, because you and I both spend a good bit of time in L.A. I don't like sitting in traffic, and I know in the next five to ten years, we're going to have human flying drones carrying us around in L.A., and we're going to be flying over the interstates, <laughs> not yep. worrying about that. Anyway, and that's all going to be like automated. It's not going to be a human driving those machines. Right. So that's going to be really fun. And then... Now, have you heard of the Hyperloop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a company based... Actually, two companies that are the biggest pioneers in the space of the Hyperloop kind of technology where they evacuate the air out of the tube. There's a... um, a bullet train sort of thing inside Mm -hmm. of the tube so there's no friction and therefore very fast and efficient and apparently you will be able to go hundreds and hundreds of miles per hour you could go maybe from let's say la to san francisco in uh, 20 minutes 30 minutes that sort of thing it's going to be amazing really really amazing and hyperloop technologies hyperloop Transportation Technologies, that's it. HTT is based in LA, and some of the key people are there, part of a mastermind group, again, called Mm -hmm. Metal, Media Entertainment Mm -hmm. Technology Alpha Leaders. That's a great group. Uh, We meet every every Saturday morning. Just a bunch of guys who are alpha leaders who want to make a difference in the world, and uh, they're in the technology sector. They're in the media sector, like uh, running, for example, television or movie studios or companies like that. So, yeah, pretty cool. Are you in, are you in that one? I am in that one. Yeah, oh, I, I've been in that in metal for five years, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great group. I've spoken there a few times, and I've met some amazing, amazing people through that group, like Jay Abraham, for example, who's been on my yeah. other show, Marketing Speak, a couple of times. I met him at Metal, and uh, we've Dude. become friends, yeah. Yeah, Jay's great. I love Jay. That's pretty awesome, man. I yeah. love that. Yep. Mm-hmm. So human drones or human carrying drones, I've seen some video of that. That's really quite fascinating. That's going to be a big game changer for us. Even just mm-hmm. drones that carry 
deliveries for us, right? So Amazon okay. is making a big push in this area of drone delivery. So yeah, lots of exciting uh, changes to come. Are you incorporating machine learning or uh, bots or anything into y- your current business model right now? Yeah, good question. I've used some different bot technologies just for like Instagram growth, but of course, Instagram perpetually is banned it. So, but I've tested tested some of those programs. There's another software piece that is uh, one of my mentors. He actually leads a marketing mastermind. A guy named David Rice. I don't know if you know him or no, not. No, I don't. But he's kind of like a he's he's more of a behind the scenes Jay Abraham type guy where he he really oversees and develops uh, marketing and operations for businesses and he's got an incredible software that arguably like I had the guys at my buddies at draxe.com look at it and they're they'll do 135 million this year I had them look at it cuz they've got 3 and a half million emails and they looked at the software and they were blown away at the capabilities and it basically can assimilate almost all of your major software components into one platform that also uses AI to like sequence your emails and sequence you know some of your taglines and subject lines and follow up sequences and I don't understand it all but I'm like dude I cannot wait till I have a business to incorporate that with. One of the other ventures that I'm involved with is a company called Goalcast. They're arguably one of the world's most viral video companies. So that's another kind of exponential technology using social media. You get about half a billion video views a month I'm on their platforms. That's and, amazing. You know, I just yeah. watched a video that Christian Michelson, who's been on this yeah. show as well, has uh, he, he did with Goalcast. And he got... I don't know, three and a half million views or something for that. At least the last time I checked, but it was still climbing. So that's yeah, that's cool. You yeah. know the folks at Goalcast, then? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do. I've actually been consulting them for about six months. And organizationally, like really to my core, I'm more of a business architect, and so I think through I help the founders and leaders design the business around their gifts, plug in the holes where they're weak, and also develop the marketing and the business model around where they want to go. So I kind of, I can act as a bit of a CEO consultant and then also more of like a CMO in some regards. So I'm actually becoming a partner in the company too, to help them grow and scale. And, and Christian's video that you mentioned, I actually connected Christian with them to get him featured. And he's gotten, as of this morning, actually it happened to look this morning, he's got 4.8 million views. Nice. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> so he's climbing still. So you're the reason why he's got a Goldcast video. That's right. <laughs> oh, a small world. Yep. Yeah, he's in uh, another mastermind that I'm in as well. So we met th- uh, originally through uh, Platinum Partnership, uh, yeah. Christian and I. But we've been uh, seeing each other more recently at Neil Strauss's secret society called oh, the, cool. the Society. Yeah, so he's joined that. And he was asking the Society Brothers uh, to check out the Goldcast video as it was um, going live to spread the word about it and everything. Yep. Very cool. Mm. Small world. (laughs) And so you are like a business architect. You're helping companies like Goldcast. Are you helping David Rice like with his uh, software company to go to the next level? I think he could use some help in simplifying the idea so it's super compellingly clear. He hasn't hired me for that. I've been nudging him and encouraging him, hey, let's distill this down. But he's, they're growing fast. They're kicking butt currently, but they, uh, they haven't hired me yet, but I'm in his mastermind. They should. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So. so what's his mastermind called? That, you know what? I forgot what he... He hasn't really named it other than it's a, a marketing, he just calls it like marketing mastermind, David Rice's marketing mastermind. And we've got 20 people in the group and normal 25K ahead type deal. But some good, if you know Mark Anthony or Mike Rice, like Mike Rice created Digital Marketers courses and a bunch of John Asraf's courses. 
like he's got a pretty amazing online course creation program. So there's some some interesting people in the group for sure. David's super well connected and knows all the big players in the marketing world too. But yeah, so that's he doesn't have a name for it, unfortunately. He should brand it though for sure. I'm still unclear what the software that he has does. What makes this so magical? You know, that's a question that I've asked him to, hey, dude, give me that one. And this is a great example, right, of your, I have sat through hours of explanation on it, but I don't have that. It's how important it is for us as business owners and marketers to get that one or two sentence explanation on it. I'll have to send you, like, basically, I'll send you the link after our show. And you'll see everything it does. Okay. And you'll be like, wow. If a it's lot. a public you know, website or a document, I'll share it in the show notes, too. Yeah. Yeah, okay. but it's, he can pretty much guarantee inbox placement at, like, 90, 99%, 98%, like, versus, you know, the Infusionsofts of the world are, like, 68%, 71% just through how they the software works and then they do all the other all the other retargeting pieces all the other ad copy stuff is somewhat built into the software too mm. but i can't explain it in a clear compelling way which is why david needs my help <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah when i had a software as a service for a um, previous agency it was very important to have a crisp description a uh, kind of an elevator pitch for it and so this was gravity stream technology i had invented to kind of do an end run around the uh, issues that you have with implementing seo in a large company and enterprise oftentimes it takes at least many months if not years to implement seo and doesn't need to be that painful it doesn't have to be that expensive you know it can be over a million dollars to implement stuff that you would think like this should be pretty straightforward to make your URL search engine friendly and to do you know pretty basic SEO. No, nope. it's a twelve month, eighteen month process. It's over a million dollars, and it is you know with these big e commerce sites. So my technology would put a middleware layer there, and using a proxy, a reverse proxy, we would swap out search engine unfriendly stuff with search engine optimized stuff and yeah it would alleviate their need to implement their at their web server level because of mm. this middleware layer and we'd charge on a cost per click basis and so that was pay for performance if we didn't perform if we didn't drive lots of new google search traffic they didn't pay for it mm -hmm. and then we had clients paying us even seven figures a year like uh, Zappos. Nordstrom was another client that was using this technology, and it was all pay for performance. A huge game changer in the industry that was always focused on a, a set monthly retainer. Yeah. Ten, 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand, whatever it is per month. And now you have a pay for performance model. It was a game changer. So that was a big reason why that company got acquired, my previous yeah. agency and that concepts. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, so and another thing I think is interesting about machine learning in particular, and, and AI is kind of like a more general way to describe, you know, machine learning is something you can implement today in mm -hmm. a business. Uh, there's some really great technologies out there. Some are even open source. TensorFlow, for example. So you can start playing with it today and see where you can eliminate some more kind of human elements that are a lot of labor or require a lot of repetitive tasks and mm. scale something inside your business that way. So that's, I think, a great opportunity. And when one company that I've invested in is using machine learning or AI in their, it's an algorithm that helps you with cryptocurrency uh, portfolio management and where you want to invest and when you want to pull out and when you want to put more in. It's called Token AI. So that's pretty mm -hmm. cool technology too. And yeah, they're about to do a public launch actually. So tokenai.io. They even have named their AI, they call it Juliet, <laughs> and she helps you manage your cryptocurrency portfolio. Pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. 
Yeah. I dig it. Yeah. Now, let's move on to another topic. And I know it's one that Tony's very big into, and that's energy management. He's able to just be on stage for hours upon hours upon hours without even taking a break to go to the bathroom. It's crazy. He's like a machine. And it's all about his energy management. So how are you utilizing energy management in order to get peak performance in your business and your life and your relationships and everything? Yeah, great question. So I would say for me, it's a lot about rhythms. And it it really comes down to remembering that we are more human being than human doing. And you look at nature. You know, nature has a rhythm. It has a spring. It has a summer. It has a fall. It has a winter. So it has rhythms built into it. And those rhythms kind of set the stage for the life cycles. And if you screw up, like if you're in Tennessee and you skip winter, you skip fall and leaves don't fall off the tree, man, it screws things up. But And also you look at like a polar bear, for example. Polar bear, if it's on display in a zoo every single day, a week, so seven days a week, its coat actually starts turning yellow. So because it's living in violation of what it naturally needs. So if you look at human beings, man, we're meant to have playtime. We're meant to have work time. We're meant to have downtime. We're meant to have energy exertion time. It's like that cycle of energy exertion and energy renewal. And I look at the four quadrants, spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical. And I got a lot of this thinking from the power of full engagement. So is that a book or or is that a, okay. In the power of full engagement, you just get this really great analysis from these sports psychologists that work with some of the top athletes in the world. And what they discovered is that there's energy management and rhythms to the top athletes. You need just as important as the exertion cycle as the renewal cycle. And yet for us in, in our normal work life, how often do we really think of like, man, I've got to really get my energy all the way back up to peak for me to kick butt and crush it today so or tomorrow. So what's my downtime going to look like? Like We know we need downtime, but guess what? We're plugged into our phones, our social media, our notifications all the time. First things we 90% of us do, we wake up, we turn our phone on, or we never actually fully renewed. And we wake up and we flip our phone and see, hey, who Instagrammed me? Who Facebooked me? Did I get any text? What's my email? Versus like, I love to stay in airplane mode. I'm on airplane mode right now. I'm in airplane mode in the mornings up until 8.30 or 9 where I'm not interacting with the world. I'm actually renewing myself so that I can step into my day, deliver, be present, and kick butt. And I'm starting from a state of my cup is filled up. Versus my cup is kind of empty. Oh, that's great. And I also keep my phone in airplane mode a lot. It's not Mm -hmm. just because I want to be productive, but it's because I want to be healthy. And the EMFs are very bad for your health. They disrupt the cellular membranes. So I recently learned about this at the last Bulletproof conference. Dr. Mercola was Mm -hmm. talking about EMFs, and I met Brian Hoyer at a Bulletproof Conference. I had him on the show. Fascinating episode. We deep dived into EMF exposure and how it affects the cell and how it affects your health and then how to minimize the exposure that you get. Like, for example, you might want to paint your bedroom with a special paint that blocks the EMFs. You probably wow. want to unplug your router and modem over the course of the night because you're not going to need it. You're going to be sleeping. <laughs> so mm. don't douse yourself with the, the EMFs where you don't need it. And also, if you have your router in your bedroom, that's even way worse or very close to your bedroom or on the other side of the wall where it's right near your head, definitely move it and also unplug it at night or put it on some sort of timer. There's smart meters that are really bad for your health as far as the EMF exposure. And there's just a lot you need to know. So that's a great episode to listen to. 
I think that's next on my list then. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. And so one thing that, at least on an iPhone, you can be in airplane mode and still be connected to your Wi-Fi. So you're just not mm -hmm. getting the data from your cell connection, but you're getting it in from your, your Wi-Fi. So you could still have notifications, emails coming in, WhatsApp messages and, and calls, and you could still get dis distracted and your day mm -hmm. disrupted with all that. So how do you keep that in check? Do you completely turn off, when in airplane mode, you turn off the Wi-Fi as well, or do you let some of that stuff in? I turn off the Wi-Fi as well. My Bluetooth is off, my Wi-Fi is off, so that, like, when I have a date night with my wife, man, you know, we do that. When I'm in the gym, frankly, I go airplane mode all the way. Now, you know, rarely, sometimes I might, if I need to, like, read or download something, say a podcast or a book or whatever that I'm reading, then I'll flip. But for the most part, I'm in full airplane mode and the universe cannot reach me. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's <laughs> so important, especially right for there. date night. I mean, I cringe when I see people with their phones out and, and they're half paying attention to their significant other or the person they're out on a date with. And they've got their phones in their hand. It's just crazy. Or even just putting the phone on the table is bad. Yeah. The quality of your conversation will be less than if you put the phone away. Because mm -hmm. if it's even, you're not touching it, it's just there sitting and it's in view for you and your date, it lowers the quality of the conversation and, and, and the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, and I'm a quality time guy for my love language. So it's especially like bothersome for me. And what happens is like, too, if, if I hop on my phone, guess what? Other people at the table are on their phone. Like, test it out at dinner. You go out with a group of five people. One person pulls out their phone. You just triggered everyone else to pull out their phone yep. and check their phone. <laughs> it's like, it's contagious, like yawns. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So your top love language is quality time. Did you read the book by Gary Chapman? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I love yeah. that book. So the five love languages are, besides quality time, there's also physical touch, acts of service, words of affirmation, and mm -hmm. what's the last one? Gifts. Gifts. Yep. My yeah. wife is big into gifts, <laughs> and it's mm -hmm. ironic that the one that I could not remember right now was the one that's her primary <laughs> love language, and she gets on me for forgetting that all the time, like, oh yeah, right. <laughs> it doesn't have to be big. It needs to show that I care and that I've thought about her if it's just flowers or if it's just a small something. It shows her that I love her in a way that she, where it, it means something for her. Whereas for me, physical touch is number one. That's my mm -hmm. primary love language. And so I don't feel as connected if she's not physically touching me. So... She knows that, and she will go out of her way to make sure that I feel loved in, in that way. And so it's really, it makes a big difference. And your kids will have different love languages, and you need to know what those are so that you can communicate with them in, in the way that they feel most loved and, and appreciated. It's a game changer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's one of, one of the best things you can be aware of, and it... Like, my wife is words of affirmation, so I forget that a lot. So I have to, like, have a post-it note on my bathroom window or on my bathroom mirror. So it's like, give her words of affirmation. <laughs> so <laughs> it triggers me every day because it's the one that I need the least. Because I just want, if I get quality time and physical touch, I'm pretty golden. So, yeah, yeah good stuff. Awesome. Besides the Love Languages book, is there another book that's been uh, really particularly impactful in your relationship with your wife? Yeah, I would say some of the Alison Armstrong stuff that... Uh, oh, I love her. But, yeah, and I've had her on the show. It was oh, an good. incredible episode. You've had some great guests on this show, man. Oh, I, I have. My all-time favorite, Byron Katie. Oh, dude, she is great. She yeah. is amazing. Yes. 
the four questions and the turnaround mm -hmm. she calls the work i'm sure saved so many lives it's changed millions and millions of people's lives mm -hmm. and minimized or reduced suffering for yeah countless countless people no doubt yeah no doubt yeah yeah so any of allison's stuff like it's that whole framework of men and women having different needs and nothing being wrong with that and and just honoring that has been a game changer for our relationship and for like some of our close friends their marriage was essentially saved because of some of the processes in there of the feminine and masculine and and learning how to respect and appreciate each other's differences so yeah i love that and we all have aspects of masculine and feminine in, mm -hmm. in each of us and one of the things that was huge epiphany for me that I learned from Allison is you can injure your partner's masculine. Like if I injured my wife's masculine aspect, then she could look me straight in the eyes and tell me, I hate your guts. <laughs> and I know I've mm -hmm. injured her masculine. But if she can't even look at me, if she just crawls into a ball, wants to go hide somewhere, crawl under the covers and bedroom and, and the bed, I know I've injured her feminine. Mm. And that wow. is a game changer because the way that you de-escalate and you help her to feel safe and loved and cared for and fix the situation is vastly different if you've injured her masculine versus if you've injured her feminine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. That's a great distinction. Yeah. I actually heard anyone say that before. So pretty profound. Oh, it's it, there's a whole process that a woman will go through, a feminine woman, if you've injured her feminine, where she like loses her words. She can't mm -hmm. articulate why she is so upset. Mm -hmm. And you just can't get through. And if you just keep badgering her to come on, spit it out. What is going on? Why, why are you so upset? and she can't do it, eventually, by you needling her, you will trigger the rage monster, which is mm -hmm. what Alison Armstrong calls the inner critic, kind of the voice that rents a, a space in, in the brain but doesn't show up until things get really hairy. And wow, if you've unleashed her rage monster, she will bring up stuff that you thought was done and dusted, was just resolved years ago, and is suddenly is rearing its ugly head again. Like, what? You, mm -hmm. I thought we were past that. You still, what, what, what? And to answer with that kind of tone or, or that kind of response, like, I thought we were past that or whatever, is going to just escalate things even more. So you need to know how to navigate these different stages where either you've triggered the rage monster yet, and she says things that she, like, it's like she's along the ride, along for the ride, and she can't believe what she is saying. It's not her, it's her rage monster. And it's like, what? I can't believe that I just said that. So oh nice. my God. And then she'll feel so bad afterwards, like, I can't believe I said that to you. I'm, well, yeah, that was your rage monster. You know, so if you understand this process, and you understand this is just, human nature it's mm -hmm. not like you're married to a crazy person it's just this is normal and this is because you did not de-escalate earlier you did not help her to feel safe or to feel understood or even just heard earlier before the rage monster was triggered no you actually poked until the rage monster came out really really important stuff yeah dude you're nailing it there Stefan. i love it <laughs> Uh, okay, so is there a particular book or course or anything that you recommend of Allison's? She's got a um, a really good one, Keys to the Kingdom and Queen's Code. Yep. I mean, her programs are especially phenomenal. Her books are not like reading an Apollo Coelho novel, but they're super insightful. Yep. So, And they're pretty easy reads. You know, you can actually get some of her audio books, which aren't actually books, oh, yeah. but you get them for like fifteen, eighteen dollars. Yeah, and they're recordings from her live trainings. They're yeah, so they're good. Great. Normally, you'd pay hundreds of dollars for a recording of a four-hour seminar, and it's eighteen dollars. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's so, got one on understanding women. That's that's really really good. You can get it from the iBook store if you're on a on a Mac or iPhone. You can you can get it from Audible as well for inexpensive. But you know, it's like a ninety nine dollar program that you would get for eighteen bucks yeah, by getting it as as a quote unquote audio book. So understanding women is an incredible course. I took that, and she taught that one. She's trained some really great people as well. So probably won't end up taking the course with Allison. You'll get one of her trainers, but it'll still be fabulous content and really mm-hmm. good training. But I got to experience Allison teaching understanding women, and that's where I learned all this stuff about the rage monster. And mm-hmm. wow opened my mm-hmm. eyes it was incredible yeah i agree can't recommend that her program's enough for relationships yeah yeah okay so we'll move on to another topic and that is how to leverage your genius and mm. i know tony is big into leverage i uh in fact just interviewed mary beth middleman for the show and we talked about leverage but that was in a health context she does live blood analysis and dried blood analysis. It's uh, nutritional microscopy, and she's done mm-hmm. that on me. She does that for a number of platinum partners, and she's done it at Life Mastery and uh, some of Tony's programs. I've mm-hmm. uh, been, I think, part of the curriculum as well. So we just talked about leverage. I want to talk to you about leverage as well, but from a different perspective, like leveraging your genius leveraging your your capacity without burning yourself out and being able to scale because people don't scale themselves very well they mm-hmm. try and just put it, burn the midnight oil and they burn themselves out they get sick or just diseased and it's totally unnecessary so what are your secrets to leveraging your genius Great question. So my first part that I take my mastermind members through, we have a whole module called Discover Your Genius, which is basically you go through an in-depth analysis of elevating your awareness. Because if you gain clarity on who you are, where you're freaking world class at, or where you have the potential to become world class at, and then where you actually kind of suck. Like we all have those areas of our life that we suck. And the goal is not become like suck less the goal is to be killer even more over here in this area where we crush it so this is super important for our listeners to understand that you understand first what your strengths and weaknesses are and those weaknesses you don't try and fix you don't try and improve you just accept that okay i suck at that and rather than spending effort on those weaknesses to get those elevated, you just focus all your energy on your strengths, right? Yeah, exactly. You're supposed to leverage and maximize your strengths or or minimize your weaknesses or manage your weaknesses. And that might often means, hey, avoiding scenarios where you're playing out of your weaknesses or your weaknesses are front and center. Like I'm not very good at managing. So I need to avoid essentially as much as many managerial type responsibilities as possible even though i lead companies and businesses so i need to i need to stay out of the management side of all those details i'm not going to follow through nearly as well as someone else can so you're Uh, not going to give performance reviews to your team for example yeah i i mean i'm not going to be scheduling them and orchestrating all the details of those correct but yeah. you'll still give the feedback. You just won't be person who architecting all of it. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I won't be setting up, scheduling, making sure we stay on track because I'll forget when we did our last one and all those details. I'm a genius at starting stuff. I'm a genius at driving stuff forward. I'm I'm very gifted at you know when we've done. I'm very gifted at seeing the big picture and and also building those key relationships and seeing the opportunities that are right there and then catalyzing confidence to step into those. So and it sounds like people. you're like a, um, a fast start if you're familiar with oh, Colby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, very high in the quick start. 
Yeah, so like the five things we look at for getting clarity on your genius, the Myers-Briggs test, the DISC profile, the Colby index, and, and wealth dynamics is another one that most people don't do, and then the strengths finder. And I know if, if you're one of those guys that's skeptical on personality tests and not sure how to use them or whatever, man, I can guarantee you, you just haven't learned how to utilize them properly and haven't revisited or didn't. Maybe sometimes people don't even take them properly. Like they answer the questions how they would want uh, the response to be versus how it actually is. When you gain clarity on your genius and couple it with your areas of passion, then it like you start figuring out, oh, that's where I make $10,000 an hour. Yeah. And there's another test that I would add to the list, and that's the Fascinate test. The, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Sally. from Sally Hogshead, yep, mm-hmm. who's also been on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome. I'm, honored. I'm becoming more and more honored to be on the show when you're a <laughs> great guest. <laughs> yeah, so the Fascinate test is all about how not you see the world as the test taker, but how the world sees you. Mm. Yeah. It's good. It's important because if you want to bolster your position in an enterprise as an employee or an industry as a thought leader, you need to know how the world sees you and how to put your best foot forward in that respect. That's great. I'm going to add that one to the list. Yeah. So So I have my team members. First of all, I have candidates who are going to join the team potentially, who have made it through the various stages to the to become finalists, I have them take DISC, and mm-hmm. I have them take Strengths Finder. Mm-hmm. If they come on board, then I also have them take the Colby test. I just had a new person join who's doing a great job so far. She took Colby. What it said, though, was that she's in transition and she needs to take it again because it wasn't mm-hmm. showing her true colors. It's, yeah. um, if you're you're just in a, a job transition or a life transition, you're not going to answer the questions in the way that you normally would. And it's important that you do answer them with your kind of normal modus operandi. So that's mm-hmm. a great test, Colby, K-O-L-B-E. I haven't taken wealth dynamics. I know about it. What's the value prop for taking the wealth dynamics assessment? So wealth dynamics, man, the cool part about that is it goes into your pathway, your natural pathway for building wealth. And as you're doing your natural pathway, you see, like, for example, I'm a creator. There's like nine different pathways. There's trader, there's deal, which is like a deal maker. There's a star who wants to like, not necessarily be front and center, but then they kind of want to drive a project forward and be a key player. And there's the mechanic who like systematizes everything. I'm a creator. So my profiles are similar to like, a, and, and they actually tell you people in history that have built massive wealth through that profile. Like one of the other creators in history, Walt Disney, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Richard Branson. Like at one point, Richard Branson was negative 55 million pounds overdrawn in his banking account with Virgin Airlines. Wow. And, <laughs> right? Like, uh, he was on the risk. precipice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, then you got uh, Walt Disney in his 50s. He turns to his brother Roy and he wants to launch Disneyland. And he's like, Roy, you know what? We got to go all in. We got to get this. Let's mortgage everything to make this happen. And wow. like, literally put in everything at stake that they built their lifetime to create. To make Walt, to make Disneyland come to life, and of course it succeeded, but that's a little bit of the nature of, of a creator. They are often all in. They're risk takers. Look at Elon. I mean, even Tesla right now is in trouble a bit. They built incredible cars. I have a Tesla. I love it. But he. I'm getting mine like, in a few months. It's uh, uh, yeah. I'm in the on the list here. Yep. Sweet. <laughs> yes. You're going to love it. But Elon, he took his $330 million from PayPal, put 100 in Tesla, 100 in SolarCity, and 100 in uh, SpaceX. Then they were multiple times on the verge, each one of them multiple times on the verge of going out of business in the final hours, final days, final weeks. And he was having to borrow money to pay for rent. That's, that's what 
creators do, and it's a, but we need other people on it. The other piece that Wealth Dynamics tells you is it also tells you who you need around you to really have a chance to hit a home run and to really build a great business. And the last little snippet that I'll mention is like it's almost, it tells you the pathway. And think of a pathway as like, hey, if I step, or if I jump in this current, if I jump in this river, and the river current's just going to take me to where I want to go, versus trying to fight upstream, versus trying to get to the other side, instead of just going with it, my flow is to create. I am going to be able to build wealth through creating. And then when you help other people, because sometimes in our mind, like we try and be someone else. We're like, man, I need to be like this guy. I need to be like, like my Warren buddy. Buffett, and I, w- I want to be a master trader or whatever, and that's not your path because that's not how you're wired, and you just end up beating your head against the wall, right? Yeah, exactly. The people that succeed the most in life, they're most in alignment, I feel like, with who they're most created to be, with who they most are. They're not trying to be a second-rate version of someone else. Yeah, really important. And you also mentioned StrengthsFinder. I'm a big fan of StrengthsFinder. That's about $15, $18 to take that test, so very inexpensive. Do you know offhand what your top five strengths are? Yeah, ideation Mm -hmm. is number one. A relator, like I like to go deep in relationships, of course. Connectedness. And when I was talking about, like, I'm a founding CMO of um, basically this partly a tech company, partly a counseling company in a way like anyway long story short on that my genius in that company is i can see the thirty thousand foot view and see where we are way off we're on point and redirect now if i have to go in and manage all the nuances dude i get zoned out so that's the connectedness i can see the interconnectedness of seemingly disconnected parts then belief i have to core to my core i have to really believe in something and the fifth one is intellection just need intellectual stimulation, ultimately. That's, that's cool, yep. And it really, it's very telling when you know just off the top of your head what your top five strengths are. That's a different kind of a person that just is, is more tuned in and plugged in. That's really cool. My top five strengths, according to StrengthsFinder, are futuristic, input, ideation, strategic, and learner. And I think futuristic is a superpower. That's how I see it. Like I can see where things are heading and I'm looking at the horizon not as it, it's a mental construct in actuality. The horizon doesn't exist. The sky yeah. and the the ocean or the, the land do not ever meet. Mm-hmm. We're sitting on or standing on a globe and we forget mm-hmm. about that. Our linear processing minds think of everything as linear, but no, things are speeding up exponentially and have acceler- the law of accelerating returns and all that, and we forget about it. But I have that in mind so much because I have this futuristic strength and it allows mm-hmm. me to see where things are heading. And you combine that with input where my brain is like a huge file cabinet. I can retain so many different things, like marketing campaigns that were a decade ago, and like and then my ideation and strategic come in to like morph something that I saw like, oh yeah, we did it. There was a scavenger hunt that Budget mm-hmm. Rent-A-Car did about 15 years ago and we could do a scavenger hunt online in this way and tweak it in this sort of fashion and it could be hugely viral and get you tons of links. And you know, I just, I'm very, very much a, a creator of different mm-hmm. ideas, you know, brainstorming and all that and, and in a very strategic way rather than tactical. And then a learner, I'm constantly learning and absorbing new stuff, going to seminars. I'm a seminar junkie. (laughs) I go to masterminds all the time, and I'm reading all the time. I have a relentless thirst for knowledge Mm -hmm. and for uh, betterment of myself. So, yeah, Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then if you take your StrengthsFinder assessment and then you give it to your team, so that they know how to relate to you and work with you. And then you have your team take StrengthsFinder, and you get to learn how best to relate to them, like somebody who is a relator or somebody who has got woo or something different than what your top strengths are. You can work with them in a different way and and 
leverage their strengths and them leverage yours and not really tap into the weaknesses on either side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. What, for me, what I've noticed is when I have clarity on my strengths, you know, clarity precedes momentum and momentum is power. Momentum is your friend. And when I can communicate with clear positioning of who I am and where I deliver the most value, then that, that I've just anchored in a distinction. Like, you know, my phrase for who I am right now is a business architect. I can look at an organization from the CEO and the CMO level and help people think through and design the business around their, where they want to go, their vision and their giftedness and fill in, help fill in the gaps. So like that gives, gives me a lot of clear positioning as I interact with other entrepreneurs versus if you don't have clear positioning on your genius and your genius is where you can get paid a much higher level and it's fun. I have friends that are incredible. They got their PhDs in nutrition and all this stuff and they create products, nutritional products. And they're some of the world's best product formulators. And now they get royalties for these products that they've helped create yep. for these special ingredients because they know they're genius. Instead of trading hours for dollars, which is what mm -hmm. so many people do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Do you want to say anything further about trading hours for dollars? Because that is a trap. And yeah. it's tough to break out of it if you're just, that's day in, day out. Yeah. I mean, I was talking with a guy earlier today and he's, he charges 225 bucks an hour. And I was like, Josh, you're missing out on the power of leverage. And you're also locking in. When you think of hourly time, you're missing out on the, the transformation. And you're also, it's, it's almost like you got this big, beautiful sky above you. But you're looking down at the bushes below the trees. And you don't ever lift your head above to see the sky. And there's this beautiful rainbow and the sunset. And it's right there. And rainbow and the sunset represents the blue ocean that you can step into in creating value for the world. But if you're looking too narrowly at what can I generate per hour, you're missing out on some of the transformational impact, transformational value that you can create. So, like, I know... It's a very myopic viewpoint. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So... It's like I know with Goldcast, Goldcast for me can be a billion dollar brand easily. Like in three years, three to five years, it's there. So I'm going to step in, I'm going to get paid decently, I'm going to get equity, I'm going to get upside, and I'm going to help all these other thought leaders build their brand and tell their uh, tell viral compelling stories. So that's one like billion dollar opportunity, or not billion, I'm not going to get a billion dollars, but I'll get millions tens of millions if I help them get to that billion dollar valuation. Yeah, so it's a billion and, dollar opportunity for them that you're going to help facilitate and you will get mm -hmm. uh, compensated in a way that's not hours for dollars. It will be based on the value creation that exactly. you participate in. Mm -hmm. Cool. Exactly. Yeah, great connecting, but we've hit a lot of uh, topics today. <laughs> <laughs> we have, yes. So let's close this out with how could somebody work with you either on a coaching basis or participate in your mastermind? Like how can somebody tap into your genius and use it as a way to get leverage in their lives and their business and their relationships? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So I've got several things, you know, that I have as an offering. I've got my one-on-one -on -one sessions with high level entrepreneurs. I don't do many of them. They're not cheap. So it's kind of contact me and we'll see if it makes sense and then we'll go over details on that. But mainly, I love my Rising Stars Mastermind. It's designed for exactly that. The star, you're already a star, but you're rising. You haven't, you haven't summited your peak yet. And you're on, on this end and I want to help you get there faster, help you bring the future forward. If I look at the power of masterminds and learning, it's like you're reaching into the future and you're bringing the future to you right now. So I love that. It's, it's a high-level group of six- and seven-figure entrepreneurs in a variety of industries. You can go to risingstarsmastermind.com. I'm also launching an, a mastermind accelerator program, which is a four-month, just ramp up, crush it program that's a little easier entry point, too. So if people are interested in that, you can find out all of the information there. is also on mikezeller.com. 
but would love to connect with you guys. You can follow me on Instagram, Michael R. Zeller, or uh, Facebook is just Michael Zeller, and that's Z E L L E R. But All right. I'm on honored to be on the show and connecting with you well it's an honor to uh, have you on and to count you as one of my dear friends so thank you so much mike and i'll include the links to your various social media presences and so forth on the show notes page also the stuff that we talked about things like disc assessments and strengths finder and all that will include all that on the show notes at optimizedgeek.com And in the meantime, until next week, have a stellar, amazing, fantastic week and apply some of this knowledge in your life, in your business, in your relationships and make a difference. This is Stefan Spencer signing off. Thanks for listening to The Optimized Geek. Your host has been Stefan Spencer, whose own transformation is chronicled in the upcoming book of the same title. Stefan is a three-time author, professional speaker, and leading expert on SEO and online marketing. Remember, true happiness comes as a result not of outside circumstances, but of your own actions and attitudes. Life happens for us, not to us. Subscribe for groundbreaking insights, inspiration, strategies, technologies, and distinctions that will facilitate your own personal transformation. Simply visit www.optimizedgeek.com and please review us on iTunes. Until next time.